Hello there, aspiring notary publics. Welcome back to Tiger Toledo's Notary Cash Flow Channel. Today, we have a special treat for all you busy bees out there. If you're a notary public juggling a hectic schedule, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll be sharing some effective hacks that will help you make the most of your valuable time. Let's dive right in. As you're closing these power of attorney deals, there's the big spenders are going to stick out like a sore thumb. These are the ones that need a third party witness. These are the ones that need you to print out the documents, that need expedited service, that need um, to do a medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney at the same time and possible other documents at the same. You want to find out who these big spenders are and what they have in common. And then once you do that, once you have, have these answers, you're going to do two important things. You're going to speak directly to them. You're going to be upfront about your customer requirements. Meaning, of course, we know that they have to have a valid photo ID, right? But you're also going to let them know that the customer, the client must be coherent, right? That if they're doing a power of attorney, they must have a third party witness. If not, you're able to provide one for them. You're gonna let them know what your requirements are at this point. You're not gonna leave them in control when they're calling you for advice. You're gonna to advertise to speak directly to them and then B, you're gonna re-engineer the whole sales process because now we're targeting the clients that have the most money. We're still gonna get the ones that are paying the 150, $178 for power of attorneys. Yeah, we love those clients as well. But the clients that are spending 400, 500, $800, oh yeah, you gotta treat them a little bit different. I want you to look at it this way. You have a you have a watch store. You sell timepieces, right? One side you sell Casio watches and then the other side you sell Rolex watches. Are you going to treat the person that's buying the Rolex watch the same as the person that's purchasing a $10 Casio watch? That would be foolish to do. This person is willing to spend Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a Rolex watch, and then this person over here is looking to spend ten to thirty dollars for a Casio watch. You cannot treat those people the same. It would be foolish to do as a business owner. And I'll give you another example from real life experience. When we were, when we promoted, um, I used to be a nightclub promoter when I first came to Chicago. We realized very quickly that there were a, there was a group of people that did not want to party with the general, you know, crowd. Yeah, it was okay that they were in the same location. That wasn't a problem. They didn't care that they were listening to the same DJ. That wasn't a problem. But you're telling me that you want me to be on the main floor with all of these regular ass people? Don't you have a VIP booth? Isn't there a VIP booth? I don't care if it's two steps above the main floor, because a lot of times it was. It was literally two steps above the main floor. We would take a velvet rope, go from one end to another, and we would take one of our security guards or uh, bodyguard and place them right in front of the... <laughs> It, it, it's, it's unbelievable. We will place them right in front of the VIP booth. No, there wasn't no curtain around them. People could literally see what they're doing. 
but they were willing to spend 10 times more money. Now, general admission to get into the nightclub would be like $20, $25, right? These people were so adamant that they did not want to party with the commoners that they would spend $500 for bottle service. And then they would spend an additional $500 just to be in that booth. That's why when you see, if you ever look at a party and you see that they're coming out with uh, champagne bottles with the sparklers, oh, they spent big bread for that. These are people that want to be separated from the common herd. So you must accommodate for them. So once you do that, you're going to look at what caused these better customers to buy from you. So you're basically going to go back to this and you're going to fine tune it. You're going to make it even more lean. And then you're going to reverse engineer the buying process so you can start catering to the best customers. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah, real talk, bro. That was me. I could never afford VIP, but I always wanted to be over there sitting in behind those ropes. Mm -hmm. It's true. And believe it or not, the, the, the cats that were in the VIP, Guess what happened? They attracted better looking girls, right? I'm 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 talking about I'm I want to show you guys the psychology of this. This is why I'm saying like when a person calls you and they tell you that they um they live in these affluent areas, they're trying to tell you that don't treat me like the commoners. So these guys that would be in the VIP booth, right? These girls never took notice of them. I mean, like, because I, at the time I'm approaching the nightclub, I wasn't partying at the nightclub. I was making money at the nightclub. That was the difference between me and them in my 20s. I was profiting off of these cats. So these same guys that these girls wouldn't even look twice at who were on the main floor with everybody else, these girls wouldn't give them the time of day. Even if they offered to buy them a drink at the bar. They couldn't even look into these, look in these girls' direction. The moment these guys got behind that VIP velvet rope with the bodyguard standing in front, those same girls, those same girls would literally go over by the VIP booth and be like, oh, what's good? Like, it looked like you guys are doing good for yourself. As, as they should. As they should. I'm not going to call them no gold diggers. I'm not going to call them none of that. I'm saying, who don't want to be around people that are winning? Why would you not want to be around people that are winning? So now these girls... <laughs> The ones that were able to get behind the VIP booth, right, now made the other girls look average. Oh, man, the psychology was incredible. I had a, I got a master's degree from just that. From just watching human behavior or what a velvet rope can do two steps above main ground and putting a, a, a ominous figure in front of the booth. You can now charge what you have charged a person for $25. You can now charge a thousand dollars for incredible. These are what power, you know, here's the thing with elderly people. I, I just found this out like last week, you know, why elderly people, Look to get power of attorney documents done, trust packages done, and stuff like that. 
is because they don't want to look like fools in front of their other friends. They don't want to look like, oh man, John used to do so well for himself. What happened? Ego is on a whole different level with baby boomers. I'm just letting you know right now. Ego is on a whole different level for baby boomers. They don't want to be the person that was always doing well. And then they got sick. And then their kids come and then they put them in a nursing home. Now their neighbors, they are more concerned about what their neighbors would say about them. They're more concerned about what their friends would say about them. They're more concerned about what their close family members would say about them. Man, he spent all that money to put his kids through the best colleges and everything. And how did they repay him? They put him in a nursing home. They sold his house. Oh my God, what happened? Ego blow. Therefore, they're like, nah, I don't want that to happen to me. You remember when Aretha Franklin passed away? What was the first thing they said? She didn't have a will. They didn't say nothing else, but Aretha Franklin didn't have a will. Where's her fortune going now? This is real. So I'm giving you insight of the mindset of the people that you're going to be interacting with the most. Now, let me ask you guys a question, real talk. Put your thinking caps on. Who are the ones, now Jazz, you're a ringer, Tech, you're a ringer, so you guys got to sit this one out. <laughs> you guys, you guys been around the block with this stuff. But I want you to answer this question. Who do you think are the people that call you to do power of attorneys? Is it the person that needs the power of attorney or is it someone else? Put it in the chat or, or unmute yourself and tell me. Okay, Tulsa said the children. Who else? Type it in the chat. Who is the person that will contact you to do a power of attorney? Is it the baby boomer or the one that's having the complications? Or is it someone else? You said the people, the people that need the power of attorney? Okay. Okay, you switched up the answer. Okay, I'm with you. Um Brandy said. The children and other fam who want to gain control. Tulsa, you should have kept your first answer. It's the children. It is the children. It is the offspring that will contact you. See, here's what happens. Here's the dynamic. Father's a baby boomer. He could give a rat's ass about technology. Doesn't care about it. If anything, he watches Discovery Channel to see all of the, 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 the new technology that's being rolled out. But is he going to be using it? He probably doesn't even use his smartphone 3% of its capacity. No social media sites, no nothing. He's not on it. Google, you tell him to Google something, he ain't doing it. Now, you, you, you do have them, those grannies out there that, that are real savvy with it. They got Alexa. They got, they got smart watches. They doing all that. They, they real fly with it. But then most 
baby boomers, most of the elderly, they could care less about technology. So what is the first thing that they're going to do? They're going to delegate that responsibility to one of the younger offsprings. Hey, I need to get a power of attorney done. Go figure it out. <laughs> Just go out there and, and figure out how we got to get this done. And it is the offsprings that are Googling, what do I need to get done to do a power of attorney? Well, you're going to have to get the documents and you're going to need a notary in your state to notarize this stuff. Okay, cool. Let me get the documents out the way. Boom, they get the documents out the way. Sometimes they don't even do that. They call the notary to see if the notary can provide the documents. And I'm going to leave you guys with, let me write this down because I don't want to forget it. Okay. Now the person calls the notary and now books the appointment and you're sending your Calendly link to the offspring. Now who pays for it? Most likely it is the baby boomer or the person that is that is in need of the power of attorney. Nine out of 10 times, that's who's actually paying for it. But who's, who is facilitating the whole process? It's the offspring or a very, very close confidant. That person is like, okay, I got everything set up. This is, her name is Jazz. And she um, she said that it's going to cost about four hundred and three dollars. How do you want me to pay for it? OK, you use my American Express. Go ahead. And that's how it gets done. Most of the time. The person that needs the power of attorney done is not going to contact you. I will say 90 percent of the time they are not the ones that are going to contact you. It's usually somebody that's very close to them that's going to reach out to you. Okay? Now, this positions you very, very well, too, because let me tell you why. The money is not coming out of their pocket. Mm. Talk to them, George. The money is not coming out of their pocket. So they have no attachment to the transaction that is going to happen. Even though that may be their mom or their grandmom or their father or grandfather, that is not money that is coming out of their account. So when you tell them a price of $403, you're like, mom, it's $403. Mom is like, I got to get this done. Go ahead and pay him. The person that facilitated that whole phone call, that whole walk through everything has no vested interest because the money is not coming out of their pocket. It's like for them, it's like having a corporate credit card. Your corporate credit card got $50,000 limit. He was like, hey, just make sure that the business gets taken care of. No problem. I'm putting Panera on this shit. I'm going to Chipotle three times a week. Oh, the business is going to get done. But I'm going to run it up. You better believe it, Chaz. I'm going to run that motherfucker up. This motherfucker going to Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus and shit. And he's like, I took a client there. He likes midgets. What? Blame. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. He likes midgets with, with makeup. I took him to the circus. You took the client and all of your kids to the circus too and shit. They have no attachment because the money is not coming out of their pocket. <laughs> yeah, funny.
<laughs> you know, putting the laugh emojis. I'm telling you. I'm telling you this. Because when you send a link over to them, see, there's times where I've taken phone calls and Nana will be right next to them and they'd be like, okay, Mark said it's going to be X amount of dollars. Give me the credit card so I could go ahead and pay. They have no problem paying for it. So keep that in mind. The person that's actually contacting you, most, most of the time, they're not the one paying for it. Unless it's a dire situation, they may have to come out of pocket, but guess what happens? There is a clause. I'm going to show you guys exactly what in the intricacies of the power of attorney in a second that they have the chance to make get their money back. They will get reimbursed for that. So again, they're not even paying for it. Hmm. Talk to him, George. So this is what I wanted to say too, because you guys already exchange information. You guys know what state, who's in what state, you know who, um, their name, you have their phone number. A very lucrative part of this business is document liaison. You do not have to be an attorney to drop these documents. I'm going to show you firsthand that I'm able to do it not only for other notaries, but when it's time to for me to notarize, all I have to do is ha hand the phone over to somebody else that is unrelated to my business and they create the documents. Very lucrative. So let's take a look at these major players before we create the document. The, these major players are my favorite power couple, the Carters. So in this situation, Beyonce is going to be the principal. Jay-Z is going to be the agent. If anything happened to Jay-Z or the agent, you have the right to select a successor. In this case, the successor will be Beyonce's sister, Solange. And because the third party witness has to be someone that is non-related, not married to the family, we're going to choose the homie Diddy. Okay. So let's fill out a power of attorney. One second. In the meantime, unmute yourself, ask questions. Let's interact while I pull this stuff up, you guys. That was my question. Where, mm -hmm. where do we uh, retrieve the, the documents from? I got you. I got you. I must, I'm going to leave the link in the chat right here. And that's where you would get the documents. And then I'm going to open up this site for you. And we're going to create a power of attorney from scratch. From scratch. And I promise you, after, after this demonstration right here, you'll never, ever, ever charge less than $100 for a power of attorney. It's that much of a, a, a shift. Anybody else? Anybody got a questions, comments? What's on your mind? Okay, I have another question. Can a power of attorney be reversed? As Meaning far as like, say, I, I, um, my father has four, four daughters, right? Okay. He's made me the power of attorney. Well, because my daughter, my sisters, they have, um, they, they voted in and just put it on me. So oh, okay. I became that when he was in the hospital and mm -hmm. he couldn't, you know, comprehend anything. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So now I'm in control of everything mm -hmm. with him, right? But uh, in the case of what if my my the, the sister under me, if she wanted to come in and say, hey, well, you know, I don't think it should be like that. We we, should, we just voted. We didn't say that you can have full authority or you know full power of attorney. Can it be reversed? It cannot be reversed. You would have to actually do a new power of attorney or a revocation. So basically he would just like have to dissolve that one and create a new one. Okay. Um, as far as amendments, amendments are basically, you might as well do a whole new one. Mm -hmm. So what we're actually going to do, because you're, you're in Florida, right? Yes, but my father's in New York. Okay. So he would have to do it in New York. All right, so let's do this. We're going to create a power of attorney document for mm -hmm. New York City. Okay. We're going to do a durable financial power of attorney. And was this is the site that I use. It's called eForms. I love this site. 100% success rate. Never, ever had a problem with them in five years. In five years. When I had my executive assistant, I want you guys to see how many power of attorneys we were creating for customers. We have over 16 pages Hey, I wanted to ask you about wills, about the Aretha Franklin will, because I know you're getting ready to demonstrate mm -hmm. the power of attorney. So I figured if you could answer the question about wills first, and then I guess yeah, go yeah. ahead with the demonstration. Um, in a case like that, let's say if the, because you say the children are going to be the ones doing the contacting. So, you know, they contact you and then they say that they need a will and, um, uh, let's say grandma or mom in this case, you know, isn't, um, they're not requesting it. Mm -hmm. Like the mom is requesting, like maybe she is requesting it, but at least the, we know that the children are the people who are calling. Right. Mm -hmm. Does, and then if, you know, how do, I'm, I'm trying to think about in terms of like uh, your urgency and your pricing and your positioning and your availability, like what, what, what are you doing in, in that situation? Let's say, not necessarily on her deathbed, but let's say she's kind of ill and then the parents or at least the children are requesting that the will be done because of its so urgency. Like, what approach are you taking at that? Are you taking, all right, this is a pretty- I'm not touching the will. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you-, are you Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do the document liaison for wills because it's way more intensive than a power of attorney. This is where they, they need um, property index numbers, safe deposit boxes. And, you know, there's so much information they have to dig up. I just recommend them to a lawyer. I send them to a lawyer and then I have an agreement with the lawyer. I say, after this is done, I need you to make sure that they contact me back to, to notarize their document. Okay, for the notarization part. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say they've already got it done and they just needed, to, they just never got it notarized, which, okay. you know, I've seen a situation similar to that, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it was all good, but I'm just trying to think this is a last minute, you know, urgent situation, not yeah. necessarily deathbed, but the daughter calls and says, my mom is, you know, stage three cancer. She's in her right mind, but, you know, we need this done. Like, shit today i mean she might die tomorrow like what in terms of like positioning and pricing are mm -hmm. you like are you how do you disqualify that person how do you know how do you kind of make sure that i always thought about just doubling up on the price and that would kind of weed them out but that's not always the case I mean, what are you thinking about my question would be why would you want to weed them out well because it's it's they're trying to get this will done and it's not the mom who's calling for the will, it's the children. And then are you, because, you know, if the person is really, really sick, you know, and they got it drafted, they just never got it signed. Why all of a sudden now? Why, what, what changed? Why is it all of a sudden now it's a priority? So, so it's not our concern, right? 
we're not going to adopt their problems. We're going to offer a solution to their problem, but we're not going to adopt it. We're not going to inherit their problems. So as long as it's not a surprise to mom, when you show up, you're like, what is this notary doing here? Yeah. I, like when, when there's situations that may seem a little bit like super urgent, I tell them, I was like, hey, when our notary show up, it's not going to be a surprise to your mom that a notary is here, right? Because we're our my 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 notaries will get really really, you know, feel feel uneasy doing a notarization, and they will turn around and walk out. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, because so let's say you quote that person at a really high rate. Do they all of a sudden, if there's something, um unsure about it uncertain about it do they then back out i'm thinking about this from the be from the point of view of a customer like i'm gonna go to i'm gonna try to go to ups store first if i'm doing something shady i'm gonna try to go to ups store first that's the cheapest thanks for watching i hope you got a lot from it don't forget to click the link below for my special discounted price